So in today's tip, we're going to take a look at range errors in JavaScript, and range errors are slightly different from syntax and reference errors in that you don't normally come across them just within your general coding. It's more common to actually create your own range errors uh, when you encounter a, a value that's not within a desired range. So let's say, for example, you had a function called check age, and it takes a value in and just makes sure whether it's in between the values of 30 and 100. And if that's the case, then we will return false, uh, but if not, will return true and there's nothing wrong with that uh, and when we run the code uh, you can see 420 it returns true and then for anything in between it will return false. So based on the result of that function you can do something else with your code and your uh, program and your app can uh, react accordingly. So another approach would be to use a range error if the uh, value is not within the uh, exact range that we require. Uh, so let's say uh, our function returns the age if it is in the actual valid range so we could then put that into a database or do something else with it if we need to within our code uh, but if it's not within that range we're going to raise a new range error and this is actually pretty simple to do you might have come across errors uh, in other parts of javascript where you have to throw your own custom error uh, but we're actually going to throw a range error here so we'll say throw new range error and then all we need to do really is to put in a value inside there uh, which will form the message so we could say something like age is not in required range when we save that uh, the uh, code at the moment is returning 50 because that's within our valid range uh, but if we drop it back down to 20 for example you'll see we get an error in the console saying that uh, age is not in range which matches exactly the message that we put inside of our range error and this behaves exactly like other errors in javascript we've got the file name and number so we can track down exactly where that error has been generated from but you can see how this might be useful as your own custom errors uh, so that rather than actually just return true or false which has uh, a lot of vagueness around it uh, throwing an actual error uh, gives more of a description as to why the program has gone wrong and it will actually obviously the halt execution of the program uh, if uh, this isn't caught correctly. There you go, next time you're creating a function uh, that is checking a value is in a certain range or is above or below a certain value, you might consider using a range error. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial, make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.